We're now going to make some angle brackets to hold this toolbox up. It's a quite a heavy toolbox, it weighs about 37 kilos when it's empty. So once it's got a lot of tools in, it could quite easily weigh 100 kilos. This box really is designed to go on top of the roller cabinet, but the roller cabinet is currently on site. So I'm going to set the brackets so that this is the correct height, and once I bring the roller cabinet back, I can slide it directly underneath. To make the brackets, we're going to be using some 50mm to 50mm angle iron and also a bit of flat bore. These kinds of brackets are very useful as well as making them to hold up a toolbox, you can make them to hold up an heavy duty shelf or ladders or anything like that, they really are handy brackets. Uh, so we're going to get going now and we're going to make a couple of brackets for this box. And before we start I'd just like to point out that I don't have all my metal working tools here they are currently on site, so I'm just going to be using what I've got lying around the garage. So if I take a quick measurement, we've got approximately 440mm there and about 430 to the top of the box there just before the lid starts. So if we make the actual angle brackets about 400 by 400 that should be a perfect size. So the bracket will come down there, go along there and we'll also put a side brace in there just to strengthen it because as already mentioned, this will weigh probably 100 kilos once it's full of tools. So we just need to draw a line on this angle iron at 45 degrees. And once we've drawn that, we can then follow that with the angle grinder and that will give us our 45 degree cut. So we don't always have fancy equipment at all. Ideally you cut a mitre like this using a metal cutting band saw which is very accurate or a chop saw. Here I've just cut that one freehand using an angle grinder and as you can see if we made the other piece up to it we've got an almost perfect mitre. Because the toolbox is very heavy we're going to put some braces in to strengthen up the bracket. So in order to do that, we're going to take a measurement of approximately there and we can see that we need a brace of approximately 300 millimetres long. So I can now mark this piece of metal and if we draw another line there once we've cut that off with the angle grinder we can then weld that in position approximately there. So we're just going to fix that in the vise and you'll notice that this is actually second hand steel, it is actually scrap that I've recovered. And now if we take a look at that piece, you can see that it will weld in there perfectly and that will brace the old brackets up. To fix the brackets to the wall, we're going to be using those screws. So I'm going to drill a 6mm hole through the back of the brackets and then I'm going to countersink the hole for the head on the screw. I've now drilled two 6mm holes in each upright on the bracket, but now we need to countersink the actual inside of the bracket there where it screws to the wall. 
normally due to countersink bit but I don't actually have one with me so I'm going to use a normal drill bit. So I've got a drill bit there that is approximately the same size as the screw head and I'm now just going to countersink this side of the hole using this drill bit. So we'll just try that and you can see that that is virtually flush with the end of the bracket so we're just going to do it a little bit more and you can see that that is now virtually flush so we're going to do that on all four holes. So if we put the square on there now, you can see that it is virtually perfect. So we're now going to put a couple of tack welds on there using the arc welder. And then once we've done that, we can adjust it slightly before we do the final welding. So I've put a single tack on the inside there. And now we need to check that again using the square and it is approximately a millimetre out there. So what we need to do is get an hammer and just tap that across so that it goes perfectly straight. Once we've done that, we can then turn it over on the back. We can put another tack on there. Once we've done that, we can clean those up and then we can fully weld it. So I'm gonna wall this side down. I'm just gonna give it a gentle tap. And if you look at that now, that is virtually perfect. So we're now going to turn it over and we're going to put a tight weld on the back side. So we're now just going to check that again using the square. You can see that it hasn't moved. So now we can fully weld this up. To get a decent weld on this metal because it's painted we need to remove the paint. So we're going to use a cordless angle grinder with a flap disc. So for this we need to put on a safety visor. So now we've put the brace into position and we can just tack that in. So we'll just turn that over now and then we'll weld that in fully.
side where we tacked it, we're just going to remove the slag. And then we'll just give that away a brush. And then we can fully weld that side in position as well. Now I've got the flat disc in the grinder again. I'm going to clean up some of these wells, take some of the spatter off, and also round off all the corners. The brackets have now cooled down and these are now ready to be fixed to the wall. I've put a mark there which is the minimum height that I need the actual brackets set into. Once we set the bracket to this height we can then get the roller cabinet underneath it. So to start off with I'm just going to make sure that it's high enough and then I'm just going to mark one of the screw holes. I'm also leaving a space at this side so that I can move this cabinet at a later date. So I'm just going to mark one of the holes there and now I'm just going to drill that. So we're now going to put a brown wall plug in there. Now we're just going to tap that wall plug back. And then we'll place another wall plug in there as well. Because these screws are very long. So we can now fix the bracket to the wall. And we'll just leave that loose for the minute. We don't want to go mad tightening it. So now we've got that fixed, we can now use a spirit level to get the bracket perfectly straight. And then we can mark the top, fixing all for the bracket. So now we can drill this hole. I've now measured the width of the toolbox, which is about 660mm. So I've actually put a mark there at 680mm, which will leave us a 10mm gap at each side. I've also used a straight edge down there and the spirit level and I've put a mark on the wall there. So now I know exactly where I need to fix my bracket to. I've now put some rubber gloves on and I've got a clean cloth and I'm now going to clean these brackets up with some methylated spirits. It's important that you do this because if you don't do it, your paint will not stick properly to the metal. So although the metal is brand new and it looks fairly clean, you can see that it is in fact filthy. Ideally you would spray these outside, but unfortunately we can't do because it's actually raining. So I've got some great primer here. I've actually shaken the can considerably, so it is uh, shaken up properly. And I'm now going to proceed to spray the brackets. When you spray something like this, it's always a good idea to do it nice and slow. 
Uh, you don't want to put too much on at once, or else you'll get runs. So I'm ensuring that the paint is mixed fully. And then I'm going to put light sprays onto the bracket. The primer on these brackets is now dried, it's the work painted yesterday and today it's a fine day so I'm now going to take these outside and I'm going to give them a top coat. So the brackets are now dry and I'm now going to fix these to the wall using some 4 inch screws. Once I fixed the brackets to the wall, I realised that they weren't quite square to the wall. It's extremely difficult fixing something square to a wall when it's got uh, lumps on it and things like that because it just throws the brackets out. So what I did is I loosened the screws and then I put some washes behind and then used a square to get the brackets completely square to the wall. So now we've got it completely square. If we measure the gap between there and there, we've got about 670 mil. The toolbox is about 660 mil. So we should have about five millimeters at each side. The toolbox is now in position and it is located in the two brackets. We can now use the box as intended, so we can lift the top up and then we can open the drawers to access the tools. Once I bring the roller cabinet back from side, I can then push that directly under here and all my tools will then be together in one place. If I ever need to take this off, I can simply lift it off and put it on top of the box if I need to take it anywhere.